That is a song I've not heard in a long, long time. A long time. <laughs> Ooh. It's been a while. It has. Dang. How long has it been? It's been a year and a day. No. A no. year and a week. Since I, you last heard the song? No. Oh, since I last heard the song. Well, that was this morning. I heard it, you know, when I was taking a shower this morning. I play it when I brush my teeth. When I'm making, you imagine me stretching, getting out of bed, putting on my slippers, walking the dog. Sitting in the throne. Sitting on the iron throne with a <laughs> cup of coffee. And listening to my theme song. And the... Hello guys, how's it going? Oh my Dave gosh. The Eric Berker. Oh my gosh, do I see that John Denver is watching? It can't be the he's shining down from heaven and watching us. I got I got so excited I put the music up really loud. You really did. It's okay. John Denver likes it that way. And so does Tracy Katava. And Eric Burker. Eric Burker. Oh my gosh, guys. Tom Hoffelder. That's, That's right, Tom Hoffelder. gets old. I feel like I should just play it again. You should, but don't. <laughs> you should, but don't. Guys, welcome to... Whoa, nope, you, you really... You can't stop me. You can't stop me. I you're, really, you're just going to do it. Well, you know what? Do it. You do you. You do what feels good. <laughs> and I know that that... Uh, this feels real good. It just... Feel right? It feels right. Does it? Maybe. Today is... Doesn't it feel right, guys? <laughs> It does in your mind. And you know what? Okay, okay. No, it's good. You know, you do it. Ooh, March 21, 2000. Doesn't it feel more when you're writing the date? Just Not that out. way. Well, Episode 63. 63. The year was 2021. And I was alone in my tower writing scrolls of magic and spellcraft. The title today is What is the title today? I don't know. I don't know either. One year? One year. It was one year ago today. Go ahead, just do it. Make it like sound really important. It was one year ago. 367 days ago, the moon has cycled this earth. But technically it wasn't. No. That, it's, the, it was one year ago. And like, like a week or something. Two weeks ago. Yeah, I don't know. Something like that. It's still a blur okay. because we're still in a pandemic. And, you know, Graham has still got to wear a mask. So here's his. He's just got, we just got cooler masks now. That's all it is. He covers his whole nose. It's not hard. It's not a chin diaper. No, he's got not a nose peeker. Nope. He's got it all going on. There it is. That's it. That's, you know, the difference between this time last year and now, first of all, we have masks. Uh, Second of all, they're cool. There's all kinds of cool masks now. You know what else Graham has, Ange? What? All the toilet paper. He could, a dragon... (laughs) I thought Could. you were going to say he's got a vaccine. I was like... Oh, yeah. he might. Graham's, Graham's pretty old. You know what? I'm going to say, yeah. I say Graham got it. There's his little sticker. He definitely has gotten that. He's old enough. He's He was like phase zero. They're like, anyone 500 years and older, go ahead. You you go first. So Graham's like, well, I'll do it. All right. One year ago today, Ange, we did it. We're here. We're still here. We are same, here. same old. I'm Tony Dietrich-Lizzi, uh, author, artist, illustrator, and I'm with my effervescent, often imitated but never duplicated, life partner, best friend, life coach, cheerleader, co-creator, co-creator, crutch, collaborator, to- chef, personal chef, personal chef. <laughs> Sometimes uh, chauffeur, <laughs> Angela DiCilizzi. How are you, Ange? We're here. We did it. We did it, you guys. We, we missed you. We actually have a lot to cover today. There's a lot of things. I was wow. thinking about it all. Um, th- we've got news. We've got good news. We've got not so great news. We've got. Um, we're gonna draw a little bit. Let's let's start with a drawing. I think that's what they tuned in for, right? We're gonna start in with a with a drawing. Who is imitating Angela DiCilizzi? Dave Peterson asked. 
Who David does? David Peterson, I owe you a message, and I have not forgotten. Give him a message now. Just get what's, you know, Dave Peterson. My don't, message is... Don't smoke in bed. What? That's a message. My message is I will be in touch. Oh, okay. That's Yeah, he's going to be doing that awesome um, creative kind of Zoom speaker series that you did last year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's awesome. And he's I'm doing it again. participating this year. That's awesome. And uh, so with everything that's been going on, I had not had a moment to uh, get back to him, but I'm going to. What's going on? What's been, what's been happening? Oh, man. Was it is stuff going on? Do I have a business card the size of a poster? Pretty much. You know, that's what happens. You just say yes to things. And then you say, why did I <laughs> say yes to these things? No, not at all. I'm just up for experiences. So many things. So many things. I'm going to run out of paper on this one, Andrew. I'm going to, I'm going to try and a little bit of a warm-up, a little sketch. It's okay, because you even taught yourself. You just add another piece of paper there, honey. You'll be fine. <laughs> That's right. I taught, I taught my own self. You taught your own self. Let just don't piece. be limited by the size of that paper, honey. Yes. Listen, if there's... All right. So let's acknowledge the fact that here we are a year later. I've been seeing... On the Drawn to Fantasy fan page, amazing art that you guys have been sharing and supporting one another and giving feedback and um, just, it's been such a cool place to see everybody continuing to be encouraging one another's creativity. I it's know. been awesome. It's pretty amazing. Listen, if there's anything I can impart on you, don't judge Jenny by the rocks that she's got and don't let the size of the paper Limit your imagination. Was that a J Lo reference? It was. It was a sad wow. try at a J Lo. It's not a good J Lo reference. It was a lousy J Lo reference. Uh, anyway, we're doing a little warm, a little sketchy warm up. Um, yes, Ange, I agree. I. Um, so let's acknowledge that. Let's I acknowledge how that's amazing that's been. Making stuff. Yes. A year later. You're still drawing, sharing, supporting, and creating, which is so amazing. You're still drawing to fantasy. And here we are. Draw, drawing from fantasy and to fantasy. We've got lots of things to cover. This first one is a little warm-up I'm doing. Um, I think, Ange, you might know what I'm drawing. Some astute and well-read viewers may know what I'm, what I'm drawing. Gladiator song. It was very gladiatorial. Did you like that? That's, a, that's an adjective, Ange. I don't know if you... It's kind of like that, yeah. Gladiator. I don't know if it's real or not, but. Let's go. What is this soundtrack we've got? Going? I don't. It's my fantasy soundtrack, so it's primarily like what I'd listen to when we what we listen to when we play D and D. It's our fantasy. It's fa it's all fantasy. Why. It's all fantasy. Got it. It's you know how I live, day to day. In a fantasy. In a, in a, in a world. In a it. world. Um, okay. So it's great to uh, see all of you here again. We're, we're a little rusty. I'm not going to lie. It's kind, of it's kind of strange because we've just been talking to each other. Because, you know, we're not seeing like tons and tons of people. But, no, um, we're looking forward to a time where we can. And now here we are still talking to each other. But... It's a year later. It's a year later. And there's been a lot that's happened in this year. It's been a year. Um, if you guys follow us on the social media thingies, other than uh, Drawn to Fantasy page, you will know that we had a lot going on in this past couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, it was a sad and difficult couple of weeks for us. Yes. Um, we lost... Uh... You, well, your mom lost her husband. That was yes, absolutely horrible. Not to COVID. Not to COVID. Not to we COVID. Were, we, we road tripped down to Florida. Uh, it took us 20 hours to get down there. I was not ready to get on a plane. We were not getting on a plane, so we drove. Yes. Um, and the same day that we lost my um, stepdad to um, the, that night... I also heard from another very, very dear friend of ours, who you know uh, that we've spoken about many times, our dear friend, uh, acclaimed 
Um, I mean, he is like... He's our Lewis Carroll. He's the acclaimed troublemaker <laughs> uh, of our time. Um, our dear, 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 amazing friend, Norton Jester. Um, Who we've had the privilege of knowing for nearly 20 years, almost as, yeah. as long as we've lived here in Amherst, Massachusetts, where we're coming to you live today. Tony's regular, our regular lunching buddy who we shared dumplings with often and Ooh. stories with. Lots of food. A lot of food. Norton was a, a uh, an incredible natural storyteller. Could tell, it's not just an author who writes, pick, writes words, books for, for children, but You'd get him, get him, get some food in him, and he'd start telling you these stories about his life, and you were hanging on every word. Oh my gosh! And it's they amazing. were such tall tales that you weren't sure if he was just making it up while he was telling it to you, and you didn't care. So, for those of you, uh, I doubt there are any of you who don't know, but Norton was the author of uh, many books for children, including *The Phantom Tollbooth*, the beloved *Phantom Tollbooth*. This is my, yep. Classic. With Milo and. and chil children's literature. Talk. He's a treasure. He was. This is as close to a modern day Alice in Wonderland as we've ever got. And frankly, Ange. Thank you guys so much. I would say um, one of the few American uh, classics in children's literature. I mean, you go to England and they've got. Alice in Wonderland, Winnie the Pooh, The Wind in the Willows, Peter Pan and Wendy, the list goes on and on. We don't have as many here in America because the country's not as old, but this one is definitely one of the classics. We'll go down as, as one of the classics. It's a terrific story. I loved it as a kid. I, I, I appreciate it even more now as an adult and author. This is a, f a first edition, Ange, that I bought many years ago on eBay. <laughs> you know, that fine bookseller with a very young Look Norton. In there. Very young Norton, and we uh, we got, I remember I bought two copies. This was back when books, a hardcover book, cost three dollars and ninety five cents. Can you, can you even? I can't even, I can't even imagine that. Now you'd put a a zero after that three. Um, anyway, um, here you go, signed by Norton and Jules Pfeiffer, for Tony and Angela. Remember, it goes without saying, Norton Juster and Jules Pfeiffer. We'd gotten a second copy signed for my editor at the time, Kevin Lewis. And I was very excited to give him. Isn't that such a great author pick, too? I love that photo. Yeah. It's funny to see him looking so serious and so suave. Yes. Uh, some of you mentioned when he was such a... Goofball. Goofball. Total goofball. master of humor and... Oh, my gosh. And, like, the king of puns. He turned 90 back in 2019, and we were able to go see him and visit him. I did this drawing as his... Celebrated his 90th birthday. birthday. This was... Uh, the birthday present I created for him, both Mo uh, Willems and myself, uh, unbeknownst to one another, did a drawing of him for him. Um, so this is uh, Talk, and now Talk has um, uh, 2019 and 1929 on him. So to Bert, Norton's birthdays. And, and you guys probably know Emily Jester, who's Norton's daughter, is usually on here. Yes. But she is... Um, Actually, if you guys have not seen it, there is an amazing documentary, which is currently available online for, for free, free, actually, in Norton's honor. They, they made it free so everybody could watch it. Um, and it's all about, it's supposed to be a documentary about the making of the Phantom Toll Booth, but I really think it's, it's really a documentary on Norton because yeah. he steals the show. He steals, sorry, with all due respect to Jules Pfeiffer, and Jules is a piece of work and a great storyteller as well, but Norton... Norton takes takes it away. He really does a great job. Um, so you guys should check it out. I will. Um, I can get post that link. A link. You I'll get post that link. a link to it so you guys can check it out. It's so inspiring. Um, it's so imaginative and creative, and just a great glimpse into the process of creation. And you also get a glimpse into what an incredible character he was. Yeah, you guys will get a sense of the amazing. I felt like the. The filmmakers really captured the man uh, and his personality so well, mostly because they filmed him at restaurants eating, and that's really that was his natural habitat, Ange. What's hilarious is so Norton would order something, 
you know, everybody would be ordering and then he would be like, oh, you have to try the turnip cakes. <laughs> and I'd be like, that sounds disgusting, but I'm going to try it because Norton Juster just told me to try the turnip cake. Yes, back back it up a little. He loved dim sum. Yes. And that was one of the places. We have a place here in Amherst uh, called Oriental Flavor that specializes in dim sum. And uh, we loved going there with Norton. And, and yes, we would order a ton everything. of food. We would order the entire menu. And then we'd share. And, uh, you know. And it was one of these things, like you had to try whatever he was recommending because he said it was such enthusiasm. And conviction. And conviction that you thought this has got to be amazing. And, and then, then it no, was it's, turnip it's cakes a turnip. and egg tarts. Yeah, it's a turnip and a cake. <laughs> Mashed up turnip. I'm trying to make it look like a pedal car. Milo, Milo's car was electric, I believe. It's been a while since I've read this. I know he had an electric car that he... It's so... Um, so classic. He gets the toll booth and the kit to make the toll booth, and off he goes to Dictionopolis and all that good stuff. Anyway, this is a in honor of our incredibly loved and brilliant man, um, Norton Juster. We love you, and and we we will always miss you. You will always be in our hearts, and. Um, And I miss you now. And um, anyway, this is to quote my to quote my favorite uh, lyric. I know it's not much, but it's the best I can do. So here's a little a little honor, a um, little something for Norton. And if you, if you come to Amherst, Massachusetts, where Norton lived, where we live, check out Oriental Flavor, which was his favorite restaurant in town. Grab a turnip cake. And delight in ordering turnip cake because in of itself, that is wordplay that I believe Norton enjoyed. The idea that a turn, it's like, I'll have, um, you know, I'll have spinach cake. You know, like the idea of two things that shouldn't, that dirt shouldn't. Pie. Yeah, dirt pie, mud, mud pie. pie. Yeah, yeah. It two, is like mud pie. It is. To him, I think it was like that. I think he liked it for those reasons. Anyway, this is my attempt at the, the electric car that... I'm going to make it Micah grease. said, that's pretty small. Where is talk going to fit? I know. But I remember it being so tiny. Anyway, I've, I've put a lightning bolt on it, and now it's grease lightning all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, but when we went to... So the New York Public Library did an amazing show. Um, About the history of... Yeah, it was the history of children's books. Yeah. And in that show, it was uh, curated by Leonard Marcus, yeah. who is a huge children's literature historian, yep. very noted. Um, they had a little repro of, of Milo's car. Of Milo's car. And you could get in it. And let me tell you, it was this small. It was like, tiny. Our knees were up to our chests. Yes. We were packed in there I know, getting our photos. I suspect it's almost like a pedal car, but I, I could be wrong. So I keep thinking of the pedal cars that we'd see like at Brimfield, Ange, while I'm drawing this. Anyway, what do I know? Anyway, here's a little um, electric car um, and with a lightning bolt in case you didn't know it was electric. Or he's getting ready to go race on uh, Thunder Road for pink slips, mm -hmm. as you, any Grease fan will tell you. So, and then his little fingers kind of clutching the wheel, as I would be doing. So there it is, a little a little homage to our dearly departed, but never forgotten and always loved Norton Juster. I mean, I thought about this. How, so we're at 91 years old, right? Yeah. 90. No, ninety-two. Ninety-two. He would have been. He would. He was right. He was right. It was almost his yeah, birthday. Yeah, we had exactly. I just got my. His birthday's his coming birthday. up. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about how surreal. Like you guys have those moments. I remember going to the grocery store, and it was right after we had met Norton and his amazing wife, late wife Jean, mm -hmm. um, and we had just met them and then I was at the grocery store and ran into them. Yeah. And I remember she was like, Oh hello, Angela Di Talisi is so nice to see you. And he was like, Oh hello Angela And I was like, Oh they, they eat. No, they remembered my name. Yeah. They remembered my name. Yeah. And had a full 
one conversation and I was like, I cannot believe I am having a conversation with this incredible husband and wife duo um, who at the time, uh, their granddaughter, Tori, yep. was a big Spiderwick fan. That's right. And we started talking and I said, well, we can get you some signed Spiderwick books. You're like, I know, the, books. I know the authors. So, uh, and so I um, ha had you sign some books. And they gave me their address, and I went over to their house. And I remember being so nervous, knocking on the door, just to go into their house. I was like, I could barely speak, and I was just looking around and thinking, like, oh my gosh, this, this was where they lived and worked and created, and where you know Norton shared these beloved or created these beloved stories. I was very flustered. I think I barely spoke. Yeah. And I like dropped the books off, and they were like, "Come in, have something to drink." And I was like, "No, I have to go," because I was just so freaked out. <laughs> That's funny. I almost wonder if the thing would have like a little bubble top would be kind of fun. Anyway, um, a little, a little drawing, a little phantom toll booth to start the day off. Um, and um, so, from something um, fairly old to something um, not as old, but just as exciting. Let's um, let's jump. We're gonna jump around a little bit. Let's jump to to this. This is a little show and tell. We might do a episode on this. I don't know. I don't know if we've done one before. Now I'm, I'm, it's actually getting to where they're blurring together, Ange, um, of what we've talked about and what we haven't talked about. This is a little windshield. I agree. Like someone said, a little windshield. Yeah, a little windshield. I could see that. This is, and I'm gonna leave it in the sleeve because uh, it is on a very fragile piece of paper. Um, get vellum. Something good for music. Okay. Get something. Well, no, this is actually pretty good. This sounds very Wandla. So this is the original pen drawing, and I'm going to scroll it nice and slow so you can really see it. From uh, the cover to um, the uh, search for Wandla. The search for Wandla. Here it is. It came out uh, ten years, eleven years ago now. Um, so here you can kind of see how the line work was, was changed into different colors and things, so on and so forth. Um, this is the original hardback. A um, little bit of, of trivia. So we get this question from time to time, Ange. This comes up. A lot of people wonder what happened. There was a very distinct design on this hardcover that was then changed as soon as the book went into paperback and was never seen again, right? Like the, These are both, just to clarify, they're both book one. These are both the first of three books. And the second, um, this paperback came out right on the uh, right before the sequel did. And then, and then the other two books kind of look like this. They're kind of dark with the band and all that stuff. So people, myself included, go, what happened to this cover? I love that. I cover? love, that I love this cover. cover too. Now here, I'll tell you guys what happened for the, for the three people listening who care. Um, we printed it light. And this is an off, what they call offset paper inch. So right. it doesn't have any coating. It's not slick. It's not shiny. See how shiny that is? It's because it has a coating on the cardboard, right? This doesn't have that. That was intentional. Look, the only place that has coating is the lettering. It's foil. Foil. Right. So what happens with this paper when, it's, when there's a bunch of these in a box and they ship, they tend to rub. And what happens is you get books that when, as soon as the bookseller takes them out of the crate, they go, oh, my gosh, the new Tony D books here. And they pull it out and go, oh, my God, half of them. Have that on it. Scuffed. They get City. scuffed. So the cover wasn't working. This light, beautiful color that I really wanted to pop on a shelf of, frankly, a lot of books that were dark. The other, the other thing, too, was we heard that they wanted it more edgy, which we didn't know what the heck that even meant. So we thought well, if we... Well, they were like, listen, the Rick Ryan books. Because, you know, those Percy Jackson books. Yes. They've been repackaged several times. Mm -hmm. So let's try to repackage them. So this was the repackage. Um, I like it. I don't love it. I was happy with it. It was it. I you know I I was willing to do whatever would help maybe get the book out in a bigger way. Here's the difference that I think. I love how epic this. This feels. felt epic. It was meant to feel it epic. It feels like Star Wars, right? It yeah. feels like this kind of window yeah. into literally a window. It reminds me if you look at that circle, it's like when you look outside the window of an airplane. Uh huh. And you see kind of the world down below and the clouds, and oh. you're like, that's what's going on. That's what that felt like Thank to you. me. Thank you. Thank you. This is meant to certainly evoke Star Wars. This dusky sunset color is definitely me conjuring Tatooine 
and my love of the palette of that first original Star Wars movie, which we now call A New Hope. Um, and also, like, that this book is about a, a human girl, but has aliens and a robot. Anyway. Classic movie poster field, Kevin Sylvester. Thank you, exactly. Kevin Sylvester. I was also thinking of that as well. Epic. So, why am I showing you all this? Well, gee, I would love to redo these covers. I'd like to go back to this cover. Maybe we do it, and we just put some kind of coating on it. And, yes. And make this dark. And actually, why would we do a, that? If that was a gloss finish, like, it, or, I mean... You wouldn't have that problem, right? You know, there's light covers all the time. It's yes. It's just the offset paper. Paper is what the problem. And I like it because I like the way it feels, but it was definitely problematic. And to their credit, the publisher warned me. And, uh, you know, I was stubborn. I was an artist with a vision. And, um, but you know see, what? I just have this feeling that you'll get to see your the new original vision through. All the way for books two and three. Because... If you don't already know, they made an announcement that The Search for Wandla is going to be made into an animated series. Uh, it is in production. It is, in, it is past being optioned and developed. We are actually in production. It's going to be done by Skydance Animation, which is a newly formed animation company at Skydance Studios, comprised of some of the best animators in the world from Pixar and DreamWorks and Disney all working. And they have been working for the last two years on developing the search for Wandla into an animated series. This was one of the things we were super excited about that was going on in the background last year while we were drawing and sharing our time with you guys. And so what I, I can't tell you much. It is helmed by... Uh, Lauren Montgomery, who um, was the showrunner for our favorite uh, uh, series of Avatar, Korra. The Legend of Korra. Uh, the Legend Korra. of Korra. So she um, uh, oversaw those seasons. So if you're a big fan of The Legend of Korra, same. She went on to go do Voltron after that, and she's overseeing this. Um, it is not 2D. It will be a 3D animated looking movie. So think of Pixar, Disney, and... and, and um, that but um and i of think of course working with um some of the best in the in the industry so we're very very excited about it and uh i am going to certainly use this opportunity to talk to my publisher see if we can bring this original cover back in and let me finally have the excuse to do the other two covers because they were sketched out and i actually sketched out books two and three i just never got to do them because this idea got canned. So I always thought this was a cleaner cover. I think especially after we did the Kenny and the Dragon box set, that seemed to go so well. So um, big, exciting Wandla news. I'll keep you guys posted when I'm allowed to talk about it and what I'm allowed to talk about. I am involved. That I can share with yeah. you. Um, I meet with the team fairly regularly on both the visuals and the story. They are amazing people. They're doing a terrific job. It is in amazing hands. Trust me. So, very exciting news on Wandla. Uh, we'll keep you posted. And you could, if you want to know more, you can totally Google it. And the press release came out just a few weeks ago, actually. Yes, so in case you missed it. So you can check it out. It was in a bunch of cool stuff. Like yes, very awesome. excited about Search for Wandla. So coming maybe we'll be doing, yes, mate, Kevin, maybe we'll be, the covers will be done live. We'll I be would live. love nothing more, Kevin. You think the way I think. That's exactly what I was hoping for. David um, Peterson, it is going to be um, 3D animated. Yes, yeah, so not 2D like an old Disney movie, um, which I love, um, but more in the vein of a current Disney or a Pixar or a DreamWorks movie. That's how they're, they're working on it. So, and, uh, and as I said, some incredible people oh who have worked on huge films all working on it. I actually like... It's like a dream team, you guys. It's insane. I actually like that it is a series versus a film. Um, it's going to allow us more time to take a little more time to tell the story. Um, it is remaining quite faithful to the spirit... I'm going to put an underline and then italicize on that of the books. But um, there will be some, some alterations and changes, but I'm in on those discussions. And that's part of the process as you kind of streamline these things for TV. So we're very excited about that. Um, I've got some other stuff from the past that's n not that old. Let's see if anyone knows how old this piece is from. I just posted a link, by the way, if you guys want cool. to read more to the article. Ange... Have we been doing scripting as well, is the question. 
Have we been? We oh, are. This will be. So, I mean, where will it be streaming? Like streaming. Oh, on, on Apple, Apple, Apple TV. So, Eva Nine and company are coming to Apple TV, which was something that was very important to the team at Skydance because they had a, a relationship with Steve Jobs and the and and Apple, and that's really where they wanted it to go. So, it's going to Apple TV. So, we'll see. Between that and Ted Lasso, maybe it's you'll you'll have a, an excuse to. Uh, Try it out. Buy a new phone. Ask for the free subscription for a year and give it a try. Maybe you'll like it. Um, no voice actor news yet. Uh, no voice actor. No, it's still a little early, Lee. Um, but um, I can tell you guys I have championed hard for Terry to be part of the team, and they are listening. So I think that's still a little further It'd down the road. Terry Hatcher. Who oh, did the Terry audio. Hatcher. Yes, Terry who did the audio books. So um, anyway. And I'll take any questions on that as we go along. Ange, I brought out an oldie from, I hope I got this right. I looked at it. I think this is it. I think this is from episode one of Drawn to Fantasy. I could be wrong. Someone will correct me, I'm sure. Alfonso Morales was there, was there will definitely one? correct me if I'm wrong. I went back and looked at episode one. We drew several things. Um, we drew some D&D monsters, like an ogre and we drew the mushroom people, which I have the finish. I don't have those sketches because we gave them away in the junk pot. I have the finish of the mushroom people um, that from that would have been, you know, maybe an episode or two later. But um, this, Alfonso said, yes, sir, it is. There it is. I knew. I was, And then Dang. I saw this fairy was at the very end. And I thought, holy cow. All right. That's cool. So anyway, here it is. The fairy from uh, episode one. A spider wick inspired flower fairy. Uh, I'm going to take another stab. We'll see if I've gotten any better at drawing her. Uh, well, <laughs> the funny thing is, you were drawing more then than you have been lately. I haven't been drawing a lot lately. Well, I've been drawing a few things here and there, but things, more stuff we can't talk about. Um, you know, for for the old fans, this has got a very um, Lady of Pain vibe to it, mm-hmm. with all the things coming out. So the old Planescape uh, deity, the Lady of Pain. For those who uh, have been playing playing along, uh, so anyway, let me let me see if I can do our our flower fairy again for today. So that's that's big news on what's going on. We have other books that are being developed, but they are optioned and just developed. And I make it a habit not to. First of all, I can't talk about it, but even if I could, um, I don't because so many things get optioned, so many things get developed, and they just don't always make it to production we like to share it when it's actually been printed as news yes as opposed to prior than that because well we don't want to disappoint anyone including ourselves including ourselves we don't set ourselves up for heartbreak and uh my my uh our our good friend and my friend david peterson knows that all too well and i really felt david's pain when when mouse guard got the the plug pulled on it that is Oh my gosh, Alfonso, you had to bring up the ukulele. Yeah, how's that? How's that? How's that been going? (laughs) Well, I mean, I'm not going to say what, but also in the past year, which we weren't working on at the time, is an additional television show that Tony and I are creating together. Yes, that we've been writing together. We are both um, executive producing and we are both writing on. Yes. And so I haven't had all the free time. Plus, yes. plus, we wrote a book. You you wrote a book. We kind of worked on it together that we're going to be working on later this year. So yes, so we're so, working on a book together as well right now. So there's that. So lots of it was it was. I feel like I didn't do a lot last year, and thank God we didn't have Animal Crossing then. I really feel like I wouldn't have done a lot. We and Santa Claus brought us Animal Crossing this year, so we're late to the to the nooks and the animals. But um, it, we just did different things. Than we normally do. It wasn't just all about bookmaking. Yeah, well, yeah. I think the other thing is, you and I were like, we were, I mean, we're always here together working, right? But we were doing Drawn to Fantasy. We're in our groove of kind of keeping the household going and keep holding one another up and supporting one another. And in that, we are already close, but I feel like creatively we got even closer. And so we started collaborating on projects more. Yeah. Which was awesome because, you know, during COVID, if you had a crappy day, it was really great to have somebody with you, like, holding you up, right? To lean on, to lean into, to kind of support you creatively. And that's what we were doing for one another. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, wow, 
we're working on like two projects together too. Yeah, yeah. Strange year though. It's been a the universe. Emily Martin said, "Can we visit your island?" <laughs> it's four it's stars. I think you it's not that exciting, Emily. <laughs> it's not that. Although, um, I can tell you when. So I knew we knew about Animal Emily Crossing. Wants to hear version of Tom Nook. Yes. Yeah, please. that needs to happen before the end of the hour. <laughs> um, okay, so first of all, my guy, my little man looks just like old me. He just got gray hair and glasses it's and literally wears literally like, a wears a track suit, shirt, hoodie like this and and Except for St. Patty's Day. You had that I did I got outfit. I got the whole thing. I was living my best leprechaun St. Patty reality. Um, that game is so dangerous for me because A, I'm a completist and B, it's like my favorite things. Let's go fishing. Let's catch bugs. Let's dig up fossils. Yes, yes, and yes. Let's go diving. Those are all like, yeah, that. All the things you couldn't do in real life. You're like, I'm in it. Yeah. All the things I was doing as a kid living in Florida, I was, that's it. That's all the things. So, so Sophie's like building and, and, and she, so I live on Sophia's Island and she's like, you know, bu- doing like little custom pathways and and moving landscape and terraforming and i'm like i caught a butterfly you're like give me all the things yeah i caught a butterfly wait your character is just you it's a it's... collector yes in a little like track suit with glasses i know i mean i tried to do a spider wick i did a little spider wick study and i tried to get like a tweed jacket and all that so he'd look very spider wicky but i just haven't played it long enough i don't know i'm sure it exists you, gave up. you were like it's too formal it and you just went, went, went casual. Yeah, I just was like, I can't. I can't. We're in COVID. I, I wouldn't wear a tweed jacket now. Why would I make my little Animal Crossing man wear a tweed jacket? Wait, because you know, it is. It's like you never really leave the house in Animal Crossing. I mean, you leave the house and then go wander around the island to get things and collect things. and then. But you don't really go to other people's islands. Cause... That's, that's me in real life. <laughs> exactly. You're on my island. Guess what? We just opened the gates and you're now here on the island. I'll give you a dream code and you can visit any time, but that's pretty much we it. We need Spiderwick Crossing, and I agree with that. <laughs> Alan Spider-wick. Spiderwick Crossing Customs would wow. be so sweet. There should totally be a little fairy collection. I, I will say I did see a red hoodie and got I got a little excited about that. That the because Jared wears the the red hoodie in, in uh in the books. Which, frankly, we borrowed from um, E.T. Yeah. Red sweatshirt. The red, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm just drawing this to give away. I don't know if, if anyone... I'm just redrawing our fairy from last. Uh, last year, she was very vertical because the paper orientation this year, she's more horizontal. Uh, but she's more zen. She's feeling... She's uh, She understands... She looks suspicious, though. Does she? Well, no, she understands the pandemic. She understands it a little better now. She's not scared. So she's more at... Her eyes closed? Her eyes are closed. Oh. Okay. She's more at ease with what's with what's going down. She understands it. I guess, I guess that's it. She's not really at ease. None of us are at ease. How's so. everybody else doing? Yeah. I agree with you. How's everybody doing? Hanging in there? I hope so. Carolyn Pagan said we're like ASMR for her. Are we? I hope so. Hold on. No, the pencils that I feel like. Oh, it's the pencil? It's the pencil. Just listen. That's some ASMR for you. I hope that hope that helped. There, is that better? Her eyes are closed now. They're very close. She's she's dreaming of her vaccination, Ange. That's what she's... Seriously, Amelia, I saw that you got your first vaccine. Right Go, on. that's awesome. Congrats. Dang, Alfonso moved and got a new job. Wow, what? where you moved like in your town or are you living where like in you are you like place? living in Hawaii now or something? <laughs> Is there something you need to be telling us? Here, here, here. Oh my gosh. Those are um like the f- I'd love to see a Tony Blathers. Oh my yes. god, I am Blathers. Tony, please do 
Uh, all right, all right. all right, all right, all right, all right. Our, 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 we've got 15 good minutes. Let me finish this fairy for someone. Thank you. Someone's saying, I don't want to see you draw an owl. I don't care. Give, give me that spiderwick fairy. So there's there's the spiderwick styled fairy. Let me just just doing a little sh little shadow on her. Give her a little. Ooh, Jill Suzanne Shipman's got until May in Alaska. Oh, man. Dang. Oh, Jill Suzanne Shipman, can I uh, tell you, we watched the documentary on Netflix. It was actually pretty good the other night on The Last Blockbuster. That's also the name of the documentary, The Last Blockbuster. The last, yes. Did I, I, did I, I, I didn't say it right. No, you said we watched a documentary about, about the, the last, last blockbuster. blockbuster. I said it's called the last And it's blockbuster. called the last yeah. blockbuster. And I thought, oh, it's the one in Alaska. And uh, no, it's not, Jill. What happened? You had one job, Jill. One job. Just go to Blockbuster like once a month. Rent, a, rent an old movie just for, you know, John Candy movie. I don't know, Caddyshack, something. Anyway, uh, it was fascinating. And if you guys haven't watched it and you're old enough to remember what a Blockbuster is, uh, you will find it fascinating because I sure did. Wait, exciting news. This just in. Connor Wong got accepted into university for animation and art since we encouraged him. Connor Wong. What? Her That's rad, dude. Congrats. That's, That's awesome. Amazing. That's very, very Congratulations. cool. Congratulations. Congrats, Connor. Hurry up. We're gonna we're gonna need we're gonna need some animation help coming up soon for some other projects we're doing. Yeah, seriously. We gotta we gotta get you, get, get a. All right, so here's a, and a congrats little. Congrats on the move, Alfonso, and the new job. That is amazing. All right, so there's a little spiderwork fairy. Now we're gonna shift gears. Before we shift gears, um, a little housekeeping. I don't know if she's watching or he. I guess this is a she. Kylie Pitts. Hello. Kylie Pitts, are you watching? Kylie Pitts, this is your junk pot from December sixteenth. And it just came back because it was an insufficient address. So there you go. It came back something 921. I it, Well, I got it this last week, so it just came back. So it's it's been uh, visiting, and it's thick. There's something good in here. I don't know what it is. I don't remember. But Kylie Pitts, if you're watching or if someone's a friend of Kylie Pitts or wants to pretend they're Kylie Pitts, please send me a direct message with your updated address. <laughs> Um, by the way, uh, Tamisha Finley Mitchell got out of the house and went to Frankenmuth today for fudge and cheese. Does that mean you live in Michigan? That's in Frankenmuth is in Michigan, right? Frankenmuth. Is that, Frankenmuth is awesome. It's like this cool, super cool town. And um, I went there once and they have amazing fudge. So I'm really jealous that you got to have their fudge. They also have one of those Christmas shops that it's Christmas all, all the year, time. All the time. Okay. And there's like a mini train village and stuff. That's there, right, too. Um, that's very cool to me, Sean. That sounds like um, almost like our... Um... Yankee Candle? Yankee Candle. Yeah, but it's a town. It's oh, it's a whole town? It's a town. Holy cow. Yeah. That's that's commitment. Yeah, Frankenmuth. And I'm just the name is cool, Frankenmuth. Frankenmuth. So oh, this is for God. Emily... Has anyone else who's played this game, now everyone who doesn't play this game is like, all right, I'm out. Bye. Everyone's good seeing you. I've been to Frank and Move. It's good to see you, T-Dog. Um, what is this? A Nook? This is the Nook guy. Tom Nook. Tom? Tom? I think his name's Tom. Tom Nook. Tom Nook. Tom Nook. I'm giving him a, a little suit. I don't... He wears like a shirt. It's green. I... I I'm making it like a suit today. He's wearing Chad like a... Chad Thompson said, maybe draw a pride-inspired fairy or creature for all your LGBTQ fans out here. Oh, my gosh. I'd be happy to do... Well, hello. This isn't... You can't see this in color? This is all rainbow colors. You can't... Yeah. <laughs> that's this, this, Yeah, it's in rainbow colors. Yes, of course. I feel like I could totally see that ensemble being rocked at a pride parade. It would be amazing. Amazing. Yes. 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 Special yes. shout-out to all our fans to quote the uh hard rock cafe i live my life by love all serve all so uh, thanks for joining us yes. happy to have you here all right there you go i don't know what that did uh, that was color that's what that was that was me color. adding all the yes. the spectrum of colors um tom nook has anyone else noticed first of all we had to borrow so much money from this guy but also he's a raccoon, and raccoons have the the mask. It's like this guy. 
What? Amanda Putnam's got COVID. Oh, man. Amanda. I hope you're okay. Thank you for doing this. It's neat. I'm lying in bed with COVID on the mend, but it's been a trip. Much welcome inspiration. Oh, speedy recovery. I hope you're well. from school, from your students, from teaching? I hope. I know. I've I've been been thinking that, that the teachers are, are, they are definitely part of the, the front line along with so many other people who keep our entire communities up and running. Hope you're doing okay. Drink lots of fluids. Get some rest. And get well soon, for sure. Definitely. All right, Tom Nook. I don't I don't know if I'm doing them right. Hold on, I'll pull up a little He bit. seems more happy to get your like, money. He's always just had so he's like, no, well. he's like this. He's he's got his little hands on the counter and he's like, so. He's got those sleepy eyes. Yeah, those sleepy eyes. And the ears. That's the sleepy eyes, but man's like, you know something? You owe me money. You owe me two point five million bells. <laughs> I can I can give you a house that you want, but you're gonna have to give me a lot. I'm just gonna cost you, my friend. <laughs> but he's got his little chill Hawaiian. Guy. Yeah, well, of course he has a chill Hawaiian. He's living in he's living life. Your guy looks like. Um, I'm gonna take all your money. He looks like he's kind of from. Um, all right, I'll do him kind of like chill. Zootopia. Okay. Ooh, oh, now yeah. he's like a little fox and the hound. I know he's not a raccoon. That's for sure. Is it's, that what he is? I, that's what I assume or he is. is he a beaver? That's a raccoon. That's got a... But his little tail. That's not a raccoon tail? Wait, what is Tom Nook? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh! Tom Nook in The Godfather! Yes, of course! Somebody else said it. Yes. That's amazing. Yes, Tom Nook is a crook. Wait, I thought he was a raccoon. <laughs> I was going he? down the raccoon road. Now I gotta Google what is Tom Nook. What is Tom Nook? Uh, okay, he is... Hold on. Giving it to you right now. Tanukichi, which is a fictional character in the Animal Crossing series. What? Yep. Wait, all the other animals are real animals. And and there's I've got a lot of questions about that too, because there's an octopus who can live on your island and walk around and wear clothes, and then you catch octopus Wait. and you dive, and then you sell that for for food or money. And, and then you have heads of praying mantises on your wall in your study. Yes. It's, I, listen, Bless I love, you. I love video game. Thank you. But I, I did have a lot of questions when I was like, wait, are you a hamster? Should I give you the pet hamster? Like, <laughs> I, I'm a little, I'm a little yeah. confused. And then, yeah, you're catching things, but that you're look, giving them to other animals. And why do the things that you catch look totally, like, scientifically accurate? Mm, like Pompoco, yeah. Oh, yeah, Pompoco. But then the things that live on your island just look like oh, weird... Oh, you guys are posting things. He's a raccoon, somebody said. Yes. I thought he was a raccoon, too. No, the article I... Oh, a cross between a raccoon and a beaver or a raccoon dog. Oh. Either way, he's wearing... Tanuki. A he's K-A wearing dog. he's wearing the bandit mask, which means he's stealing your money. Yeah, but I'm on the wiki page and it says he's a Tanukichi. Oh, Tom Nook. I'm doing a lousy. This is not a good Tom Nook. I tried. Oh, it's a raccoon dog. You guys are totally right. Based on the Tanuki, it's a raccoon dog. Okay, so he's a raccoon dog. Well, yeah, that's what this is, Ange. Yeah. You didn't know? Here, I'll give him a bigger nose. Now he's got a dog he nose. He isn't a bad person because he hired someone new to town. And due to that involving risk, it shows generosity. So he's not a bad guy. Who? Wait, what? That's what I just... you got to go to the Wikipedia page. A pa- well, the fact that Tom Nook has a Wikipedia page says so much about our world. Raccoon dog, Tanuki. Tanuki. Oh. Sorry, I'm having eraser dilemmas here. It's like the... Never mind. Just it's not even worth wasting your time and life. I can't keep the eraser on. It's like oh, never. Whatever. Um, Have we met? Read the art seller? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Got yeah. It. Let's just say I've got. I'm. I'm getting a salon style of art paintings that aren't real in my house because I keep buying ones that are fake. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is the, again my forte. I've got this. I know this. Nope. 
No, I may have resorted to finally just looking things up on the internet and was actually amazed at how subtle the... You guys, do you know how to time travel? Are you time travel? Let's talk about this for a Let's second. Talk about Since time we're on the subject... Of animal? Of animal crossing. How do we feel about time travel? Wait, I just want you to know that we had, you know, like 80-ish people. As soon as we started talking about animal crossing, we have over 100 people <laughs> watching now. So apparently we've been doing it wrong all this time. Yeah, we just time travel be because now the AI is like, oh yeah, you're talking about Animal Crossing. Let's get this out there. Yeah, push it out. Yes. So okay. this is. Do you cheat and time, time travel. travel? I almost did. I almost. We do not. I almost broke though in February. I was so sick of the snow outside and inside the game that I wanted it to be summer so bad and just catch some butterflies. That I almost did, and then. And she talked me off the mountain. She said, don't do it. I said, don't do it. Let the game unfold naturally. That's what I feel because it was something to look forward to. And on March 1st, when they swapped, the snow went away and there were new bugs, praying mantises and bees and butterflies. I literally caught every single insect you could catch for the month of March on March 1st. <laughs> That's how excited I was. But we haven't caught all the fish. We've tried. There's a bunch of fish that we've missed. Stupid string fish. Some string fish. I fish. I have thrown so yeah, much. Yeah, but you got those crabs the other. You got two of I those. I got the spider crab. Yeah, you're right. That was pretty awesome. So what was happening is when you don't time travel, right? Then you're waiting, and then it becomes this really special thing when you get it. You're like, okay. So I'm in a full disclosure. We have a cheater friend who time travels all the time, and it's and we our pact was we can go to his island. Yes. When you can't. he's time traveled, but we ourselves will not time travel. Yeah. That's it. That's those are some pretty sad rules. I think it's kind of like so you can go to the grocery store and steal a steak and I'll eat it, but I'm not gonna steal it with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just different people play games differently. Mm -hmm, do true. you use cheat codes or do you not? Is there what's you know, how do you feel? Look, I'm still looking stuff up on the internet because I've just got sick of paying that fox five thousand dollars every time i and buying fake paintings all right enough animal crossing we don't want to leave people out who can't talk who don't play leave them out we got more people watching now than ever <laughs> anyway here's a really crummy tom nook for you i hope it it it's this is him he's got contracts what about his little fluffy tail oh sorry here's his tail yeah there's his tail i don't think it's banded in real life but it's banded here but his ears are are round. They're round. You think I'd know after nine million hours staring at him, they would be, I'd have him burned in my head. All right, I'll make him round. I'm going to make him round. I mean, if you want the accuracy. I want the, well, the accuracy would be like, I'm going to, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Yeah, I love the little round. That's cute. Wow, this would be a great video game character. <laughs> There it is. Tom Nook is not a crook. He's just here to help with his trust fund money, money that he's accumulated over the years. Aww. There he is, Tom Nook. And then this is the contracts. And Tom Nook would have, uh, well, he'd, he'd have the little stamp that notary, notarers have, because he's a notary. And there'd be a thing where you sign your life away, sign here. There's some pens. <laughs> He's uh, got clean ones and then dirty ones because, you know, it's COVID times and you have to have the clean pen container. Oh, yeah, you're right. He would he'd have both. But really, can we talk about Isabel? Because I love Isabel. And when we play Mario Kart, I always choose Isabel because I love the idea that Isabel is riding on dirt bikes and slinging mud and, and, banana, um, peels. and banana peels at people on the weekends. That's that's my vision of Isabel when she's not on my island or Soap's Island. Anyway, there you go, Tom Nook. It's not a very good one, but I tried. Isabel, um, I agree. This your Tom Nook definitely looks like it could fit into Kenny and the Dragon World. Oh, you're right. I I'm not taking He's... credit for that. Um, somebody else said that. Yeah. Uh, I guess Marissa. I draw I draw all woodland characters kind of you know they're a little bit of Disney and a little bit of. Everything Tony else. Tony Ange, what would be your mode of transport for time travel? In real life or in in the game? Maybe in real life. Oh. 
Uh, you know, I've actually played with a few tri- time travel stories, believe it or not. I've thought about writing a time travel story. Um, I had one where I messed around where um, it was just a, it was a, um, a, like a fog that came over. And when you went in it, the uh, and that's not very exciting. The fog. other one, it was like a fog. Yeah, like you were, I was walking the dog. Like I was, <laughs> yeah, that, hence me never writing that. The <laughs> other one I thought actually would be really good in disorienting. And it's, truth be told, it, it's, I'm swiping it from a Twilight Zone episode, but you go up in an airplane, and then when you land, it's a different time. I remember that conversation with a zombie apocalypse movie. We yeah, I feel, because I think flying is so disorienting anyway, and so stressful, and the idea of landing, and you're forward 100 years, or back 50 years, or whatever you want to do, and the idea of it not being one person, but in a group of people, I think would be a kind of a compelling story. So it's not, you know, we have so many time travel stories where it is, you know, Marty McFly or whatever. They've got to go do a thing or undo a thing. But the idea of like an different... entire plane landing and everyone is back in 1950 or whatever. Also, yeah, I also think... Tom look like it. It depends where you want to travel in your yeah. story, yeah. right? Because I'm like, if you were traveling to the 80s, yeah. Then you'd be like, oh, you stumble upon some weird old record store. Or, you know, it's like Oh, you think it's an artifact of the like, era. I think it could be an artifact of the era. Or a video game. Like, imagine you, like, walk into some... Kind of like Big. You know, there's some weird random video game or something. Like Jumanji, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Some weird arcade. Well, the other thought, too, we've... T- some of the stories I'm working on, uh, books that I've been working on, I've thought about setting in the 80s. But you've been opposed to that, Ange. But Sophia has been very pro because of the idea of, like, it allows you to time travel, there's really. There's so much stuff in the 80s. Yeah, I but there's like... not a lot of Tony D <laughs> stuff in the 80s. Well, you did do your whole series of growing up in the 80s. Yeah, that's true. That was boring. Um, but I guess when do you want to go back to? That would be my thing. So if you're asking, like, what is your mode of time travel transport? Yeah. I would say it depends on where you want to go. And, some, and you why. You know what I mean? Like, if you were like, it's Victorian times. You're like, well, there's a stopwatch or a Victrola. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. You know? So it's it's kind of like, like, what if you walked into, like, some antique shop that had artifacts from all of those times and each time that you held one or interacted with a different piece, it took you to a specific time. Yeah. That. Or photos. Photographs will do that. Definitely. All right. There's Tom. He's a little better. He's a little more not so, I don't know, whatever he is. Not so wrecked. Time rec- travel not, shoes. Cool. Time travel shoes. That's kind of fun. Yeah, I, I, think, I think, too, it would depend on the story. And so what, you know, where are you sending the, 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 the characters back to? Who's your character? Yeah, Who's who's the, the character thing? and why, you know, why are they going through time and, you know, so on and so forth. Baked um, cookies that you took to certain times. What's in those cookies? Whoa, what cookies are that? What's in like, those cookies, Christopher sounds, Lee Clark? All right. That sounds like the cookies they sell here now. Mm-hmm. The legal cookies. Massachusetts. Massachusetts cookies. Um, we've we've done it, Ange. We've, we've gone through an hour. We've drawn. Let's see what we did. Let's recap, Ange. We um, we talked about our beloved and dearly departed uh, Norton, and we did a little drawing of Milo in his electric car, not Grease Lightning, electric car. We uh, we did a little redo of of the uh, Spiderwick Fairy in rainbow colors. I might add for our, our LGBTQ Q and also IA. There you go. Thank you, Ange. I'm I'm learning. I'm trying. I'm um, I'm a work in progress. Um, so we did a little redo of her, and we talked about. The search for one, the becoming an animated series. So that's pretty exciting, and uh, and maybe that'll give us the opportunity to bring back the old original jackets, which I'm hoping we can do. So there it is, guys. That was it. We, had, we, we knew it had been a while. We were excited about the Wandla news. We were excited that we were coming up on a year and we wanted to just hang out with you and draw a little we bit. We wanted to, sh- you know, if we could have shared the news early with you guys, we would have. Yes. But also we are under lock and key for all of these uh, yeah. this news. So we can't share it. But when, when we do, we'll celebrate it with you guys. Yes. And as soon as I can share more further developments, I will. I do think they will. they will try to share... Bits and pieces as they work on the show, though. I don't think it'll be, you know, two years with silence. I think you'll 
you'll be able to see things along the way. So, Ange, let's do um, let's do the junk pot. Let's do the junk pot. And uh, our our previous winner, uh, just to recap, Kylie Pitts. If you're listening and watching, I did send it. I did look December sixteenth, but it came back. So give me your address, to sender. and I'll try it again. Um, but today, let's do. Uh, let's definitely let's give away um, the Spiderwick Fairy and uh, and some other sketches and goodies. And um, you know what? I in celebration of Wandla, let me get a hold on. Ooh. Wait for it, wait for okay. It. Also, I want to call it. I'm just going to call it right now because I know she watched all year last year. She's been a great friend. I know it's going to be very, very, very meaningful to her. So, of this junk pot, I am going to call that. I have to take that drawing of Milo, and that is going to be for Emily and Tori. Absolutely. Dresser, for yep. Nori's daughter, um, Norton's daughter and yes. granddaughter. Happy to send that um, to them. But all of the other items can be yours. For the junk, the junk pot. So in honor of Wandla, we've got the very rare, not often seen, or, or certainly cannot be purchased. And I've only got a few left in stash here. But the Wandla sketchbooks, these were the behind-the-scenes developmental drawings that went into the creation of the Wandla trilogy. So some lucky winner, Ann, just going to get some original sketches oh and if some... If you haven't won, just post on here that you haven't won anything. Just go ahead. Well, actually, Ann, while you're looking, while you're looking, while you're looking... Okay, okay. I actually, when I was rooting... You found around, the list? I found the list Stop while it. I was rooting around. Stop Give it. Give me a minute. I know it's here. I should have pulled it out... Oh my goodness. It was in here, believe it or not. What? Oh. Here it is. <gasps> you found it! I found the Look list. It. The drawing fantasy list. This is it. You found the list. Oh, and I found my slide whistle. <laughs> Good. There you go. That's it. Okay. All right, so who's going to win today's junk pot? Dang. Take a look. See what you think. Who is going to win? I'm seeing. All right, I'm down with it. I found our winner. You found today. the winner. All right, I'm going to do the drum roll or my best version of a drum roll. Are you ready? I am ready. Today's winner of junk, the junk pot is Tamisha Finley Mitchell. Tamisha Finley Mitchell, you are the proud owner of these one little sketchbooks. An original drawing by yours truly. Just send me a direct message with your mailing address print, printed clearly so my old tired eyes can read it and we'll put it all in a package and send it off to you. You guys are spectacular. You're amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, If you haven't won today, don't worry. We'll be back. There's always going to be another day. There's always tomorrow for dreams to come There's true. always tomorrow. All right, Ange, cue us up. You guys... This has been awesome returning with y'all. It lifts our spirits and our souls and our creativity. No, and... that's the coffee inch. Oh. Yeah, that's what did that. Okay, I'm just trying to catch it. Um, <laughs> mine, me, this is what it does for me, T. All right. She's queuing it up. <laughs> um, you know, I like to say, uh, having been a year, um, that it has been um, just as therapeutic uh, for Ange and I, as we hope it's been for you. Happy anniversary, guys. Happy anniversary. And we will uh, we will be back throughout the year uh, doing these occasionally and, you know, drawing and talking and giving away stuff. And, um, you know, I'm glad everyone's hanging in there. And um, Amanda, I hope you feel better and you're on the mend. Yes. Everybody who has gotten shot one. Congrats. Uh, congrats. Looking forward to hearing about you guys getting shot, too. Tamisha, congrats on being a winner today. That's right. Thank you, guys. We love you guys. Take care. Okay. Be well. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Oh, and thank you so much for all of your really kind, thoughtful, meaningful words of condolences and supporting us. It really, really meant a lot to our family. So we love you guys. Thank you.
Punch people in the face that don't wear their masks. <laughs> Punch them hard. <laughs>